some people say game changers are like two billion or something and bad people in the world right they're going to change their life and you know it talks about uh, this it's about you know being about open that any one can consider that that uh, you know you as an individual can go the big guys right if you're talking about bad you're talking about financial institutions it's huge hedge fund firms you know we go with the narrative the wall street bad so that we take down the big hedge funds if I'm going to join it that they might be given it and then we talk about you know that you know very nice of a lot when it's not bad when it's being up it's not it is a bad it is a great advice on you to have it that's all and this is what we just about the financial uh, the financial books Right, so no longer I know that I have money on, and it's about knowledge. Right, when we look at DeFi in the current state right now, right, uh, just a show of hands, who here has interacted with any DeFi protocol before? Right, uh, wow, they are saturated here. Right, right. so look around you. Right, there's only a couple of people. There's not many people. Right, here we're nowhere near the state where we are getting you know two million people um you know about this about this. Like, and here's what's irritating about this, right? When you try to join this video system, you can show you the you know, best of best. Oh, this is the true fun. We're going to do this, and then we do that, and we do that, and this happened, and that happened. Then you need to read a white paper that's like 70 pages long, right? Um, yeah, so you want to measure this, right? You're trying to solve money, right? You go to the money changer, you give US dollars, you get sing dollars, you walk out with sing dollars, you pay for things. Um, but they're just not so simple to you know, show you lots of things. And maybe you should read this 70 page why video because you know, yeah, all the reason. And you are expected you know, to be present, right? And uh, on, well, the line comes, right? If you're not, uh, you're going to do some certain things and you might do things that are hard to solve, right? So it is really hard to balance this, right? And really to help you bring it into perspective, I'm going to show Show you how it looks like in your world right now. Right, imagine this. Um, so you are reading through a bank account. Right? So you are trying to open a bank account, right? And what you need to do is like you have to read through a bank financial statements and sign on six you know, risk disclosure document before you even open a bank account, right? Uh, instead of this, okay, let me just you know, continue to I have to like, oh, do you know that uh, your money? In the bank, it's not a signal, it's, uh, it's called deposit. Right? So, that from the bank to you it doesn't necessarily mean that you have the money in the bank. Right? This is document one, document two, right? Uh, you know, our service availability, right? Document number three, and so on and so forth. You get my point, right? It's annoying, right? We don't do that in all fun. Imagine this, right? Uh, you're trying to get grant, right? We have a skill talking a little while ago. Uh, Knowingly, you write out like $600 deals um, But instead of having that, you know, nice sweet interaction, you have this, right? So I'm thinking of, you know, hey, do you know that grab price they got up by, you know, uh, 2 or 6% to uh, grab? And hey, look at this metrics over here. We have been, you know, live and, uh, you know, what out for 30 days and, you know, things are flowing and this is not that shit. Uh, yeah, good. And, you know, imagine by joining an Excel uh, support group of the stock, right? And then, like, Hey, I'll uh, try this random function up there and then like a like GM, GM, GM. And here's the thing, um, a lot of a lot of companies are not really coming that and so do we, right? So this is a journey, uh discovery region for us and I'm um, maybe yes, this is our company's dashboard, our protocol's dashboard. Can you guess what we do? <laughs> Any guess? Right. Uh, Okay, the answer. Uh, basically, we fractionalize um, financial products, uh, specifically fixed income products um, that were previously available for only accredited investors for the masses. Right? That means we have access to uh, fixed income products seven percent to ten percent onward, right? Uh, and you don't have to put in a minimum sum of fifty thousand. Where is that on the screen? Alright, it's actually right here. It's covered. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is what we did. We, we seek in 
solution from uh, other protocols because well, they raised a lot of money, right? Something they must have done something right, right? They had a lot of community who love them, right? Um, and we expect everyone to be an expert in the all, yeah, and learning to be one. That's actually largely untrue. Um, the real mistake in, uh, in our journey is actually not knowing who our user is, right? Um, we just assume that everyone is our user, everyone who is interested in this wants to know about Hey, how does this uh, contract work? Hey, how does the underlying protocol work? Hey, what's the risk over here? Um, who is, is holding up the different keys? Who is doing all of those things? And we supply all this information to them, to them in the name of transparency. But here's the thing about open source software, right? We want to be transparent, we want to be open, we want to be auditable, um, we want to be accountable, right? But when we try to do all of that, we take Tend to just overload users with extra information that they absolutely don't need, right? And this is a short journey of like how we learn from our mistakes. So, uh, so there's three, there's three tools that use it. This is really applicable to any source software, as a software designer, uh, anyway, right? It's the one going through uh, uh, understanding the user uh, journey, right? Uh, how do they make decisions, let's say, around financial uh, decisions, right? You start with like, oh, um, I'm first aware of something, oh, all right, I know that you exist, right? And then you go on to like, I'm saying what the spot is at pretty much surface layer. And then very quickly, you are, you have a switch inside your head, like, oh, is this interesting for me or is it not? That's where you are considering something. And then you go on, like, oh, um, once I have said yes internally, then I'm talking about like, how do I get on board? And this is not very common in most all software out there. Um, Any of you who you know, work in a big company and some big tech, uh, you look at sales you look at your HR software, you try to make employees, you know the pain of that, right? Um, that's the way it is, right? Um, the manager thinks this software isn't thinking that in the perspective of the person. Actually, trying to apply for the or the person trying to make the game, right? And understanding this user journey actually really helps you in breaking down what you need to show the user first. Because the first time they get onto your website, so unless your company has already paid for that's another thing. Right? The first time your users get onto your website, they're confused, they're going to drop. And we do intensive UX research uh, these days, right? We want to see what our users are looking at. What catches the what you need to zoom in on, what you need to plot on. How do you layer information on the way that uh, your user can consume? And this is not so, for instance, this is not about our preparation. You see, you don't even look at a turn of text, right? In the name of open uh, transparency, uh, we present as much information as we do, but not written, right? So, you know, being able to make this kind of stuff, it actually helps you, uh, you know, engineer the in a way that your users can consume, right? And we don't mean to do it in a way to hide information, but make it accessible at different stages of the users' uh, the consideration. And at the start, yes, right? Uh, it helps if you really get in touch with the user, get, uh, you know, in front of them, right? So what we did is that we have a wide list of experience. You can see that's on different platform. Uh, this is like uh, some of the kind of conversation that happened, right? We guide users the, the entire journey in, right? And sometimes we do uh, something like, hey, uh, if you're trying to do this, can you do it yourself? And uh, you know, I'll just like watch you uh, execute certain things, right? And very often, with something that you think is very intuitive for the user, it's absolutely not. Uh, it's just something that the all have made up, right? And so what we were going to do is to actually imagine this experience for users so that uh, you know, they can uh, better them around the application. And that's really all software, right? So we want a clear product offering, right? right at the front. So here you can see this dashboard that shows you everything about the actual product. So, um, and no your customers help, right? So, you will need 
be very specific about who are users. And more importantly than that, you also need, you also need to be concerned about who are not your customers, right? So in our research, we see that you know, there are three, three, four, I mean, many different settings of it. And we're saying no, right? We're saying no to you know, customers who appears to be, let's say, a early career risk, right? These are the ones that are uh, more interest, like right? yeah. the one looking for something like uh, reservations and stuff like that. So they tend to like I'm looking for a big that goes like 200 x more, um, and so it's not the right kind of uh, who you always want to attract. Uh, we are not looking for people who are also very nervous into this uh, space, uh, in the sense that they are looking for something else, uh, not exactly not reservations and uh, potential uh, role. In the time period, like say five years, right? And the identified group will be given a name called Alpha Group, right? What does that mean? So, um, in our case, right, Alpha Group is a new career, you someone who, who has worked you know, three, five years, has some investments as well, has, has had the experience with investments before, they know the trial work, trying to manage, you know, and the delivery of investment software, you know, the trouble of uh, the of getting uh, uh, you know, of the market company, perhaps, I don't think of something of the growing of the promise, right? And we can come in to tell them that, hey, we can simplify this experience for you, we can get into certain products that you couldn't uh, you know, previously get into. It's kind of like open source financial products. Um, and beyond that, um, this is about the organization of information. Uh, and I can't emphasize this enough, right? Um, this is how users make um, you know, uh, decisions, right? They're not very kind to say that, hey, uh, they might try to see how can I just want to try to see how I can apply this, I can uh, try to see how I can uh, do that thing. So, that's all. Um, usually, for certain products, like this, those companies, uh, software, you, it's uh, just a bit of awareness, this is what I'm about to do. So, at that point in time, you want to give them information to help them decide. If the you know, products are uh, soft uh, solutions, uh, so solve their problem or not. Right? From there, you add a few hooks inside to tell them that hey, uh, you know, this, this is what makes it special compared to other software, perhaps, right? Uh, you know, you want to get them to design your know, uh, product from there. Yeah. And all of this requires different level of information and different types of information altogether, right? Uh, you don't want to overload them with, you know, Everything right at the start. So how do you get that right? Um, this is the uh, adoption curve. Right. Uh, generally, we all we are there, right? Shock and nine right now. The early, the early you get uh, through this journey and try to uh, realize what uh, what kind of experience the software is giving the user. Uh, the earlier you get to the last stage where you accept that you know um, there is something to be improved. And then you can act and integrate the uh, solution to actually improve that thing for users. So, uh, how do you get to the first stage now? Building in shock and uh, try to first to right, talk to users and what, uh, you know, map out what we are trying to do, you know, talk to some of the users, just put them in category, right, and give them the right to experience tell them that, okay, I'm watching today, I'm, you know, before you live in this room, I'm going to make sure that you actually get to this point, right? And hold them, hold them through the entire journey and see how much your uh, software has cost. <laughs> and then, once you start uh, collecting and then the things that have that, then you pretty much, uh, the rest is quite easy. So, usually, the first part is the hardest. Um, so, here's the thing, right? Uh, we, uh, we are doing a lot of this experiment, uh, you know, trying to understand how to do better UX experience in a very technical driven product. They're trying to understand financial behaviors uh, across the globe. And if you're interested in you know, the slightly software aspect of software, which is user experience, right? and I mean the UI, like the user experience itself, um, you can join us uh, for, for some of our research. I'd be happy to include you. Uh, there's an option where you can receive product information if you know, uh, just, you might be interested. Uh, I'd be happy to share with you uh, some of our learnings. That uh, we have, we have uh, a lot of learning as well. So, 
that is all for me.